Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 52 of my Hulkbuster build. So this build has been going on for a while. It's been nearly two years. The last episodes I've been doing lots of work on the legs, which were fairly neglected early on from testing. But in the end, with some modifications, I found I can actually walk in the whole suit, which is amazing. Last time I did some modifications to stop those legs twisting and wobbling around so much. So we're pretty much there with the mechanics. I've got to put the back of the legs on this time which is the last sort of big section of armour that needs building, and after that there aren't very many episodes left. Obviously this project can't last forever, and I know a lot of people have been watching it since the start, and it's one of their favourite things to see when it comes round every other Tuesday. There are some other projects in my channel though, and obviously when this is finished there will be more videos coming out and more exciting projects, building actual robots, which is what I really want to do, and why my website and everything is called X Robots. It's the origin of X-Robots for building actual robots. I'm already building a life-size Ultron torso, which is going to be controlled by motion capture and its own AI, and various BB-8 and Star Wars droid projects, so have a look at those projects in my channel. There's probably less than five Hulkbusters left, so you might as well get the most of this while you can, but don't forget I do other things as well, which are going to be quite exciting. So let's have a look at the back of these legs. So what we've got is these mechanisms that allow the back of the legs to come open and come down at the same time. And I had this clever little lever here to push them, which I'm probably going to spring so they spring into either position and they don't come open when I'm walking. And I've also got the top one here, which again springs open and springs shut. So these are the things I'm going to mount the legs on, the panels at least. And I've got the same thing on the other side. So I've got one there that does the same thing another one of those so that these can drop open and down and hopefully the panels will fit into this recess like so. I don't want to add too much weight to the back of the legs so I've got to be quite careful to use lightweight materials and the previous construction was 3D printed frames with some uh, foam floor mats stuck on and then some 3 mil foam PVC board and although the pieces feel light on their own some of them do tend to add up so the legs are quite heavy so the plan for this is to block it out with expanded polystyrene which actually is really light and in fact this whole piece will be more than enough and also EVA foam which is slightly lighter than floor mats but I think I'm actually going to put PVA on this and paint the foam. It is the back of the leg, so I'm not too bothered, or I might skin some of it with some very thin styrene, but the majority of it is going to be foam, so hopefully we can keep that nice and light. I'm just marking out some fairly unexciting bits of this expanded polystyrene to make the main pieces to mount everything on for the back of the legs, and I'm going to cut it with this knife. I've cut four of these, two for the bottoms of the legs and two for the top, and they're all the same uh, depth, which isn't very big. Uh, but of course the legs need to bend, so they can't be too much covering the knees. So um, the ones on the calves actually need to be rounded, the other ones need to be more square. So I'm going to just cut the corners off these, so that I can curve foam over them. The other ones, the foam will go across and actually go round the contour. So unimpressive as they look, here is the block for the top which is a very blocky shape and here is a block for the bottom which is going to be a curved shape. And obviously I need to have this gap for the knee here because otherwise when this shuts and I bend my knee they'll crash into each other so I need to fill that in with something else. But for now these are going to be fairly separated from each other, maybe not quite as much of that when I've got the skins on. So um, at the moment there's a massive gap down at the bottom there where the ankle is so if we have a look down here. Obviously this sticks out quite a bit, but this is um, quite a way in, so I need to break, make a bracket to fix on the bottom here, which of course hinges with the foot, so that I can put kind of the back of the foot on, and that's got kind of two big things that stick out, which will have to be attached to the leg. So I need to make something to fit in here to mount everything on, the same as these pieces. The plan is to make a very simple bracket, which is basically a box with some screw holes that can screw onto the wood either side and a separate piece that fits in here so that we've got something to actually attach the panels to. Um, obviously this is the width of the ankle there and these uh, parts that screw in fit just in there. So I'm going to print two of those off, so six sections all together. 
In fact, here they are, laid out flat on the print bed, and then we'll put that together and we'll have something to mount those extra pieces of polystyrene on. So here's one and a half sets, I've still got some more parts printing, but they fit together pretty well. I'm going to make solvent welds on these pieces with acetone, these are printed in ABS. And that should be pretty good, once it's all together it should be pretty good and pretty stiff. I can screw that on and mount the panel on top. So those are installed, they seem pretty stable, should be good enough to mount a bit of styrene and foam on, and I've also reinstalled those bungees onto some extra screw holes which pull the heels up when I walk. Now I've cut two very similar blocks to the last two, so one with a contour and one without. The one without is going to fit just here, so that's going to go behind the heel and have some details on like this, and this one is going to go down here, and this one is going to have kind of the back toes on which we see on Hulkbuster. Mine are gonna be slightly off the ground so I don't smash them when I do heel to toe walking and probably quite a lot more wedge shape so they're stronger. What I've decided to do for that bottom wedge, so I've got this bottom piece that goes right on the heel, then have this sideways piece and I've cut a piece off it which goes under those big wedges on the side of the ankles. So that's gonna make the contour on the outside. Now on the inside I can't really put very much because it will bang on the other foot. So for now this is going to be the shape of it, so I'm going to skin this in the other foam. I've cut my strip of foam and now I'm going to use hot glue to glue it on. And the only problem with this is of course that the polystyrene will melt if it gets too hot. So I have to be quite cautious how I do that, but I have done it before. So uh, we're going to glue that on, so we've got that piece at the back. And then we've got another piece that wraps in there, the other one. And that makes the wrap around, which fits on the back of the heel. So those pieces fit on there and they're gonna go slightly higher so they don't smash on the ground when I put my heels down, so there's a bit of a gap. And I need to put these toe pieces on the back. So I've made these pieces, which are again, obviously expanded polystyrene skinned with foam and I'll be skinning the tops as well. The problem is the inside ones are gonna smash on each other when I walk. So I think I'm gonna to have to offset these. So these are a bit more like this. And these ones are a bit further round. Hopefully that'll look okay. Here they are now, I've clad them all up in foam. It's not the neatest foam building I've ever done, but basically these are gonna be painted. Then they're gonna be have some sections skinned up with thin styrene painted and some 3D prints, like the sort of bumpers that are on the side there are gonna be 3D printed parts. So um, that's the basic form though. I now need to work my way up the leg doing the uh, bits and pieces for the other sections. So those are the heels fitted and I've got this piece that now fits in here just behind the boot. And in this gap is going to be some sort of uplighting that lights up the back of the leg. So that'll eventually have a 3D printed thing with some LEDs on fitted. Going further up the leg, we've then got the back of the calf there. 
And of course on the bottom of that there's some sort of repulsor, but again this drops down, so it's going to have, a piece, have to be a piece that hinges on the bottom and then hinges in or it's placed in once this is in place. So I'm leaving that for now. That's actually going to come along when I come back and do detail fill-in parts and the lighting system. So this is going to be detailed up with some vents, but for now that's the shape and the rest of the calf will be a, a fill-in piece there. And then looking even further up the suit, to the back of the leg right up at the top. In fact, there we've got this flat section. Now there are some sort of vent shaped things on the actual Hulkbuster. I'm just going to put two panels on to make it nice and easy because it's around the back where no one's really going to look. To save weight, I'm just going to paint these foam pieces up directly. I'm not going to put too many extra bits stuck on them just here and there basically for details. So in order to paint the foam, I'm going to first coat them with PVA, which is white glue. I would spray pa uh, Plasti Dip on them as well, but I don't have any. So I'm just going to put lots of about three coats probably of PVA on them. We're just going to spray them up with primer and the red paint. And then I'll stick some bits on which are painted gold. So while the glue and stuff is drying on those, I'm going to make some 3D parts to stick on. So here's a wedge and another piece, and those are going to stick, the bottom part is going to stick between the toes on the back, and the other one sticks slightly higher up on the sort of ankle there at the back. And then I'll make some more vents and bits and pieces, and we can paint those gold and stick them all over the red parts. The first coat of uh, glue has dried. You can see that's sh slightly shiny there, but I still need about two more coats. It's quite a long and boring process waiting for it to dry. Some of my 3D prints are done. Here's one of them. So this one goes in here and it's going to be painted gold. And obviously the rest will be um, red, apart from some gold bits on here, which are printing right now. I've also printed these parts and these sit on the next pieces up. So if you remember that sits just above the foot there. So that'll sit on there and that'll also be gold and um, various other features as we go up the leg. So I need to put some more PVA on this. I'll save you the speeded up video of watching it, but I need to do about another two coats and it's going to take about another day to do them and for it to dry. Here are some of the pieces which I've painted up in a couple of coats of PVA and several coats of primer. So they're not looking too bad. They're a bit rough and ready, but we're going to paint those with the Rosso Red. Right, I have some red pieces which are painted up fairly crudely, not too bad because it's going to be weathered anyway, and a whole stack of 3D printed parts to glue on. So we'll get all that stuck together, then I'll do a little bit more weathering and then we can mount them up. Those look quite a lot like bits of Hulkbuster. I'm going to do some crude weathering with rattle cans in silver and black. And then I'm going to mount them up and eventually I'll come back when I detail the suit and do some proper weathering.
It's time to stick some of the pieces on with hot glue, in fact all of the pieces. So these are going to be placed onto this frame that I printed. I'm going to leave some gaps under the heels so they're slightly higher and they don't come off when I walk. And we'll stick the other panels on. It looks like I forgot to turn the microphone on during this piece so I'm just going to talk through it. Obviously I'm using hot glue to glue these parts on to the 3D printed frame and in some cases also the wood and try and get those aligned and make sure the door opens at the same time. Now I need to make some adjustments to the brackets so they're all straight and true which you can see really clearly now the panels are on but they all fit in place okay. As unexciting as this episode may have seen, I'm actually quite happy that I've got to a point where most of the major pieces of armour are actually made and attached to the suit. So that's kind of a milestone really. Obviously there's still some more bits to do, the fill-in sections, and those will come in the later episodes as I come back down the suit and fill all those things in and detail them up. Obviously these all open as they did before, which is really good news, so I can get in and out of the suit. I may adjust some of these positions, but I'm pretty happy with the way the calf sticks out more, comes back in on the bottom of the calf to the heel there. So in fact, what's going to happen next is I'm going to have a serious go at the electronics control system, and that's coming up next time. And that, along with the lighting system, is part of the fill-in sections that are going to fill in those gaps that are all over the suit now between the joints. So really the last few episodes of this series are going to be really trying to finish it off and detail it up. So don't forget to tune in again and subscribe to my channel to see more updates on this project and other projects including my life-size Ultron project which you mustn't forget and my BB-8s.